In this video, you're gonna learn how to create a LinkedIn profile that converts, and I'm gonna walk you through five key things that you need to do if you wanna use LinkedIn as a powerful marketing tool to generate leads and drive website traffic. So the first of those five things is really just to set up an account, and you can do that by going to linkedin.com and just joining the network. It's fairly simple, and they're just gonna walk you through a couple of steps. Now, once you sign up, you're going to start having to add certain things to your profile. And the first and the most important of those is a profile image. So I'm going to walk through this element of the profile and a couple of, a couple of others and show you some best practices on them. So your profile image is extremely important. Not only does it show up on your profile page here, but also if I come into my feed in Newsfeed, which is essentially like the feed on Facebook, you can see that the profile image is here as well. So you really do want to have a clear image that people can recognize you by. And um, the, that really has a profile image. You'd actually be surprised. A lot of people, if I look at, say, my connections here, they don't have profile images. And there's no way that they're going to be successful in building a network and generating leads on LinkedIn if they don't have a profile image. So it seems like a fairly basic thing, but you would be shocked at how many people don't even bother creating an image. Now, in terms of the image itself, you can see if I go back here to mine, it's quite a cl close cropped shot of my face. There's nothing really distracting in the background there. And I think uh, hopefully you can recognize that's me fairly easily. Even if I was in the newsfeed here where the image is smaller or even smaller again, I think you could recognize that as me. And one thing that I've done here is I've kept this consistent across all of my social media profiles. So Twitter, Facebook, etc. It is important to keep it consistent. Now in this image here, you can see it's kind of a yellow background and kind of blondy hair. And so it's not jumping off the page as much. Maybe she could improve upon that a little bit. Even if I look into my network here, let me get you a couple of other examples. Um, you can see this white background pops. You, the person pops off for quite a lot. So a single colored background can often be good. You can see here there's quite a lot going on in the background which may ne not necessarily be bad, but it, it doesn't pop out as much as just a single color background, as you can see. Also, you can see a background here with a lot of, of writing in, in it. And I don't think that's a good idea because again, it's hard to recognize a face when it's so small like that. And also the writing in the background is just distracting and you can't actually see it very well. I think you'll agree here when it's like that. So for Joanne here, Maybe what she could do is have a much, get much closer to the camera, uh, have a plain background, and then it'd be easier to recognize her. And even just recognizing who someone is, is the first step in order to connect with them. So the profile picture seems fairly basic, but you can see a lot of people do make mistakes on it. So it's just worth pointing out. Now, after you've uploaded your profile image, the next thing you want to do is create a headline. And this is something that I can even work on now. And I'm going to show you a couple of other examples. So I've just said here, marketer and online instructor. Now, actually, the best thing to do here is not to focus on just who you are or what you do, what the what the job title is, but actually to show how you can add value to people. So let me show you a couple of examples of this. So we have Mustafa here. He works in Microsoft and you can see he says, Digital Wizard, helping you in a rapidly changing digital world. Let's connect. Now, I think personally, he could maybe improve upon that a little bit and get a little bit more specific. Like, how is he helping people? Um, but he focuses on helping you in a rapidly changing digital world. So that is a good headline because it shows that things are constantly changing. It is overwhelming to keep up with the constant change. And this is a guy who can help me keep up. So that is a, an attractive value proposition. It's not just his job title, but he's actually saying how he can help you. And also here, I think this is a great call to action to include let's connect. And that's something that can help you increase your connections automatically because you're giving that call to action and inviting people to connect. And also you've given that value proposition of why they should connect in the first place. So you're saying why they should connect. And then you're saying, let's connect. 
and then there's a good chance that I'm going to do it. Now remember that this headline is probably the single sentence on your profile that's going to get the most amount of visibility. People are not going to scroll down all the way, you know, read through everything. 80% or 90% of, of what people are going to see is just on this single line alone. So it is worth giving a little bit of thought to. Let's have a look at another example of a good headline here. So helping clients stay secure by hacking them first before malicious hackers do. So that is a great value proposition as well. He's helping clients stay secure by hacking them first before malicious hackers do. So that's a great reason to get in touch with him or to connect with him or to hire him because he can help you stay secure before the bad guys do. So nice value proposition. Let's have a look at another example here. Uh, you can still include the role inside sales at Microsoft, empowering people every day in the UK market to achieve more. So this is a good one because it says the role, so it's clear exactly what they are. And uh, it's even more specific in terms of the market and you know what they're helping people to do. So those are three different examples of how can you can think about that headline. One have a clear call to action and create a value proposition for that. The other is to kind of give your value proposition again and show the negative effects of maybe not reaching out to this person. And then the other is do a kind of a combination to show the role so it is very clear what exactly your role is and then even maybe get some specifics in terms of the marketplace. Now, if you want to edit your headline, very simple. Um, you can just come in and you can go ahead and edit it there. Okay, so I've just taking a look at some of those best practices and examples updated my own. Instructor Udemy empowering small businesses to grow with digital marketing. It might be a little bit long. Let's save this and see how this looks. I can just click OK. So I think that looks pretty good there for a first draft. Maybe I'll come back and try and get this down onto one line. But you can see I think that's a lot better than it was before where it was just essentially what my role was and there wasn't much of an incentive for people to connect or to reach out to me um, because it didn't say exactly how I could help them. So I think that's a lot better and I would take these uh, best practices into account for yourself. So we've talked about creating your account, we've talked about the profile image, we've talked about the headline, and now let's talk about the summary. And this is something that I could work on as well. Now, one of the cool things that I've noticed on LinkedIn is that they have actually, once you've started to update your profile a little bit where you've worked, they have actually pulled together a summary for me. So writing a summary can be hard, that's why we've created one for you to get started. So if I look at this summary, it says, experienced instructor with demonstrated history working in e-learning industry, skilled in marketing management, negotiation, business planning, sales, e-commerce, strong education, professional graduate. Okay, so some of that is accurate and actually surprisingly good summary that they've pulled together through artificial intelligence, I think. So I can, if you have that option, you can just add that in to get started. Now I will need to edit this a little bit again and before I do I would recommend you have a look at some examples again. Now to see how I could improve this let us look again at these examples to see what we could do better. So if we look at Mustafa here okay so he is talking a little bit more about himself here now um, and I would even say if he focused more like he did in the headline here where he did on how he can help you, then that is going to uh, keep people reading and, and reading down. But the interesting thing that he's done here is he says how to reach him. Reach me on LinkedIn message. He gives his phone number and he gives an email. And he also has a little call to action if you could endorse my skills. So this is, I think, the most interesting part of this profile here and something that you could just copy and paste and put on your profile as well. He gives a little bit of background in terms of uh, what he's done, but then this is very interesting. Reach me on, say, a LinkedIn message. 
So I can open up and edit my summary again. Obviously I'll have to change the number. But this is a great idea because if the purpose of your LinkedIn profile is to generate leads and connections and potential customers, then make it easy for them to reach out to you and give them specific instructions about how to do that. You could even narrow that down to one and say, best way to reach out is through LinkedIn or by email. So I'll just uh, leave that there for the moment. I think that was a good idea from that profile. And now let's look at Terry here to see what he's going to come into. Again, you can see call me directly and he's actually put in a little symbol, which is actually a pretty cool idea and something that I could do. Call me directly. And that's even a nice little thing to put in because it shows that, um, you know, they're going to be talking directly to Terry. Here's another great example for to book a free consultation with me. Great idea. Please visit for media interviews, visit Terry, blah, blah, blah. So what I like out of this is let us take this again. And this is the key point that I want to get across as well. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just look at people who are already doing it well and uh, take the best of what they're doing. And then you can use it for yourself. Call me directly at, okay, you can fill that in later. Um, okay, so I've tidied that up a little bit then. So this is another option that they could do. Book me for a free 30 minute consultation for media or speaking engagements. Please visit that. So that's actually a great little line in there as well, because it shows that you are open to uh, doing interviews and speaking engagements. And that's even a lot clearer than just saying something like send me a LinkedIn message or phone me because it's showing, you know, essentially why they should f call you. And even here, book a 30 minute consultation. Um, even if you could say, you know, specifically about what book a 30 minute consultation to, um, to learn how to protect your business in the case of maybe Terry here, because he's focused on uh, cybersecurity. So let's have a look uh, this final profile doesn't have a summary right now. So it is something that um, maybe she could include. So those are just some ideas and examples for what you can do in your profile. I would suggest you don't focus on I because you can see in the auto generated LinkedIn profile here, there doesn't mention I once it kind of just says your experience. Um, and you know, what are the things that you're experienced in? And then I think after you do that, you can add in some specific call to actions. And I think we saw some good ideas there. Just even reach me on LinkedIn. Or if you want to get more specific, I think these were brilliant ideas. I book a free consultation for media interviews and speaking engagements. Visit me on whatever website. And you can link directly that or to call me directly on that as well. So I'll just save those for the moment just to show you how that's going to appear. And you can see it's pretty short, but I think it gets straight to the point. And um, I think that is a great way that you can enhance that summary and use that summary to generate leads. They're going to read the headline then they're going to move down. And so it is important to remind them to connect or just keep moving in the page to read more about you. Now we've already looked at three of the five things that you can do, adding the profile image, headline summary, and now we're looking at the fourth thing that you can do to generate more leads or grow your presence on LinkedIn. And that is to create a custom URL. So I've already done it here, but you're going to find this option in the sidebar under your contact and personal information. And then here you can create a customized URL for your LinkedIn profile. And this is great because you can put it on business cards and it's not just a long string of random numbers and letters, but you can just edit that for yourself. You can put that on business cards. It looks great on a website. It's a short link that you can paste anywhere. And it just uh, is a great thing to do similar to what you might do on Facebook or YouTube. You can create that custom URL very, very handy and you can just edit it in there. You're, 
your own name might not be available and so luckily mine was just first name surname if you your name isn't available one great tip is just to put your middle initial so my middle name is Michael so I would just have put Dara M Walsh and probably that custom thumbnail would have been available so use your middle name as a middle initial if your first name surname is not available now the final thing that you can do to build a profile that converts is also add in your website URL you can also put your phone number in here as well and your email here as well so we have said that we will put this in this information in our summary but not everybody looks to the sidebar here but it's great to have this information here as well and that'll help you get more contact from people and also get more traffic to your website because it's listed here and you can set that up to either go directly to maybe an email sign-up form where they get a free PDF you don't just have to send them to your profile you can be quite creative with that and that's something you can actually do in your summary as well if you're linking off to your website you could say you know get instead of a free PDF consult or a free consultation you could say get a free PDF about the most important things in cybersecurity for 2018 as an example and then they go there they have to put in their email address and then you send them the PDF but that's a great way to not just put a link necessarily to your homepage but also use it as a way to get actually emails from LinkedIn so now we have covered the five steps to build a profile that converts go ahead to linkedin.com set up your accounts and implement these five strategies so you can generate more website traffic and leads from LinkedIn it's the first step to really starting uh, and in this video I'm going to show you how to strike gold with second degree connections on LinkedIn so to get started what you want to do is come up and click on the search bar here at the top of LinkedIn and then we really want to search for people and this is an incredibly useful part of LinkedIn it's essentially a search engine for people and we can see right now it's showing a list of 393,000 results for me and also then we have a huge list and options here to really filter that list down now I really want to show you the power of these second degree connections by first showing you the how many first degree connections I have so on this person on my personal profile here I've just 970 connections so these are people I've directly connected with I've hit that connect button and they've connected back so those are the person people I kind of personally know now where it gets extremely interesting is when I look at my second degree connections and add those in now it's gone up to 392 thousands so almost 400 times the network that I could tap into is just one step away so these second degree connections are connections of my connections so I know maybe someone here let me give you a real example of this I know Roy and Roy knows Emma so what I could do if I wanted to connect with Emma is ask Roy for a personal introduction or I could just simply hit connect and because we have so many connections in common she's probably very likely to connect back now if you want to use this strategy just to grow your personal profile and get those connection numbers up and you can just go ahead and hit connect on all these I would recommend you try and connect with no more than 150 per day and uh, also another tip is if you want to use this strategy you could maybe outs outsource this to a virtual assistant because it will take you a good bit of time to get through all of those now if you want to search for second degree connections in a more targeted way maybe to pitch them or get on a call to sell say b2b software or something like that what you could do is start to use some of the other filters here so we can see that if we click on the drop down here we can see that we can even type in their name their company or their title so let's imagine that i was trying to uh, really pitch our product to ctos so chief technical officers i could just type that into the title field there and now it's showing up a thousand results so I could uh, ask one of my connections again here 
for example, let's open this up, Carl. I could maybe message Carl and say, hi, Carl, um, I'd love to talk to Niall Twomey over at whatever company, Fairnego. Would you mind giving us, uh, making me a quick introduction? Or again, you can just connect and see if he connects back and then you'll have the option to message him directly. So you can see from a network where I probably had very few CTOs in it, I've now got a thousand CTOs just through those second degree connections. Now, if you wanted to even take it a step further, these third degree connections are really connections of your connections connections. It starts to get a little bit more complicated and watered down. So I think really the second degree connections are where the power is because they're just one step away with you. But as you start to add more people to your network, remember that that pool of second degree uh, connections will continue to grow again. So it's one of the amazing things about LinkedIn. It really shows the, the network effect and how powerful it is. And remember that in here, in the search engine, you can really find all these second degree connections and filter them down to really find a targeted list of people that you can connect with on LinkedIn. So go ahead and try that for yourself or put this strategy in your back pocket for later, for a client or for a company that you're working for. In this video, I'm going to show you a fantastic hack so you can message anybody for free on LinkedIn. This can save you up to $260 a year. So to highlight the value of this, I want to show you how the setup is normally. So say Marvin here, I'd like to send him a message. I'm not connected with him directly. You can see here he, he is the third connection. So he's kind of a connection of a connection. Now you can see here that there's no option to send him a message. All I see is this option to send an email. And if I click on this, you can see LinkedIn is then pushing me to upgrade to their premium product because this is a premium feature to message people you're not correct connected with directly. And then even if I select the lowest price plan, you can see that's about 200 or $22, about $260 a year. So I'm going to show you how you can save that fee just by using this simple trick. So what you want to do is come back to LinkedIn. Then you want to come in to work here and you want to click into groups and then you want to click into the groups uh, that you've joined or you could set this up afterwards. And now what I could do is I can message anybody in this group absolutely for free. So Marvin here, for example, I can come back and reply directly to him. And now I can message him for free just because we're in the same group together. So that's a way that you get around that fee. You don't have to pay for email. All you have to do is join the groups where your target audience are. Now, one handy thing that you can do is it say if you're not sure what groups to join, you can come to somebody's profile, maybe a perfect ideal customer. You can scroll, scroll down to the bottom. And then in here, you can see some of the interests or groups that they're a member of. So if I open this up, then I can ask to join this group. And then you could see that in here, there's 234,000 people that I could message for free now. So that is the simple trick, the way to get around for paying the price for this premium feature. Just go in and join the groups where your target audience are already members of. And once again, if you're not sure what groups those should be, just scroll to the end of the profile and find those groups with huge amount of members so that you can join those groups and then message all those people for free. So go ahead and try out that in-mail hack for yourself right now or put it in your back pocket for later. Connecting with prospects, strategic partners, referral partners, and other business owners should be a key priority for you on LinkedIn. And in this video, I wanna teach you a quick hack to really grow your connections quickly. Now I'm gonna walk you through an example of how I saw this done. It's an, an excellent strategy and I really wanted to share it with you and break it down for you so that you can replicate it for yourself. And this guy Noah Kagan did it here in this post. Um, it takes a little bit of explaining, I think, to really for you to understand the strategy. So that's what I want to do, just walk you through it and give you uh, an understanding of how to do it for yourself. 
So essentially this just looks like a pretty simple post here that's got a huge amount of likes and comments, but really how did this guy Noah Kagan achieve this? Essentially this is a post that went viral on LinkedIn and uh, also got Noah about 1200 new followers or connections. So how did he do that? Well, as you can see here, if we look at this article, he starts off by establishing a little bit of authority. So when you post on LinkedIn, you want to really show people how you can help them, how you can do their job better, or how you can help them run their company better. And to do that, you can start by really just um, setting some authority down. So I help build the Facebook ads platform. Okay, this guy must know what he's talking about. I spend over 3 million on Facebook ads in my life. Again, that's just another level of authority, not just that you help build it, but you actually spent money on it. And then here's the key part. W okay, that's fine, but what does that mean for me? It, well, it's possible to 10X your investment or more. You just need to know the right levers to pull. And today I wanna share my ultimate Facebook ads retargeting cheat sheet. Okay, so you can see that this has been edited and updated. So I wanted to explain how this originally read. And what he said is, same start here. Here's the authority. And here, and you can 10X your investment if you know what you need to do. And then the next line that he had in here, which is now deleted was, I will send you a cheat sheet, a PDF, showing you how to 10X your Facebook ads investments. All you need to do is connect with me on LinkedIn and also like and comment below. If you do that, then I will send you the PDF in a message on LinkedIn, which I can do once we're connected. So that was the exchange that he was asking for there. I'll send, I'll show you how to 10X your investment. Just connect with me and like and comment below. So if we look down here, we can see that there's over 1200 likes about 1100 comments so you can just guess then that the number of connections was roughly the same but that is a huge amount of likes and comments to get on a post he's now getting himself in front of all of these people and also then people who are connected to these people will start to see this post because it's going viral and there's a lot of engagements on it so it's a fairly simple strategy, something that you might often see on Facebook or other platforms, but it's been applied here to LinkedIn uh, with great success as well. Now, as you can see, he's now edited it and he said he couldn't keep up with sending all those private messages with the PDF. So he's just linked off and giving it out for free now. And there's the PDF that he was kind of really promising that he would give away. So it's a, an extremely effective strategy to grow your connections and to go viral on LinkedIn. Just tell a little kind of something amazing that you've done in your life and share a cheat sheet with people so they can skip that learning curve and learn what you've learned quickly. And then just ask for them to connect to you and to like and comment below and that you'll email them the cheat sheet. So that's all you have to do. It's a very simple strategy. But as you can see here in this example, it's very effective and it's something that you could do right away as well. And to actually create a post like this, all you do is come in and um, you can write the post there. I'll even put the link to this in the description. So if you want to take a closer look at how the language that he used here, you can copy that and use it for yourself. So that is a, the LinkedIn connections hack. Go ahead and use it for yourself right now or put it in your back pocket for later. In this video, you're gonna learn how to get blog traffic from LinkedIn, and I'm gonna show you how to use one of the latest features of LinkedIn, where you can write an article and essentially publish directly on LinkedIn. This is like just a blog publishing platform built into LinkedIn, and LinkedIn are got, giving this a lot of visibility, so it is an excellent feature that you can take advantage of in order to get more exposure. So before we get into kind of looking at this, I just want to show you a couple of examples. So Richard Branson is the founder of Virgin Group, and he's actually extremely active on LinkedIn. He publishes quite a lot of articles, and if you go to his profile, you can see them below down here. He's got over 13 million followers for his articles, and so this is a great way that he's built up his influence uh, on the platform. 
So if we look at the articles here, we can see catching up with Bill Gates on climate change. And if we click into this again, we can see that this is on, this is an article published on LinkedIn's publishing platform. Now, in terms of what type of content should you put out? Well, you want to be quite targeted and um, your content should really accomplish two goals. First, it should teach people how to solve a problem or do their job better. And then it establishes you as a thought leader. And uh, each aspect is naturally going to lead to more business if you offer them real value. And it's basic psychology and it just gets results. So Richard Branson is probably extremely well known already to a lot of people. And he's just continuing to create this content to raise issues with people. But for a business, you maybe want to get a little bit more strategic in terms of the content that you create and also the call to action for these posts. So the reason I'm showing you Richard Branson here is more just he's using it as a blogging platform on LinkedIn himself and extending his influence there. But here's an example of someone who's using it more strategically and using it to get blog, blog traffic. And this is very interesting. Uh, this guy, Neil Patel, if you come down to his articles, we can just click on the latest one here. So this is much more specific and targeted. How to find new customers using these nine Google Analytics reports. So you can see that compared to Richard Branson, catching up with Bill Gates, it's kind of more informative. This is much more an article like how to do your job better and get results. And this is the type of article that I'd encourage you to use. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that this is a good article. It's got a good amount of likes and comments. But here is where it gets really interesting. And this is the strategy that I encourage you to use. In fact, the opening paragraphs of this article don't really teach anything. There's no nine analytics reports that he's jumping into here. He's just setting the stage, giving the context. And then he says, luckily, Google Analytics has the answers you need. Click to continue reading. Now, if we look at this, it's the same post essentially, but this time on his web site. So what he's doing is he's giving some of the article away on LinkedIn, maybe 20, 30 percent of it. And then he's encouraging people to continue reading to click back to his website. So you can see that that's a lot more strategic than the, than the way maybe Richard Branson's using it. Richard Branson doesn't need website traffic, but as a business owner, you will. And so the idea here is to make it much more focused in terms of enabling people to get results and a good headline will always help catch people's attention. But then most importantly, after 20, 30% of the top of the article, get them to click to continue. And really the meat of the article should be back on your website and that will allow you to get people back to your website. And the beautiful thing about this strategy is if you already have a lot of blog posts or you're taking over from a client or you're coming into a company, they might have a lot of content on their blog, but it's just not getting that much visibility. And through LinkedIn, you can repurpose the same content. You don't even need to create new content, share it out, and you can get a lot more traffic from that content that you've already created. Now, the cool thing about these articles and the reason that you want to use this rather than just putting a link to your uh, web page here is because if you publish an article, so if you go ahead and write an article here, everybody that you were connected with will actually be notified that you have created an article. So this is a new feature from LinkedIn. They're obviously trying to push adoption of it. And as an incentive for people to use it, they are notifying all of your connections anytime you publish something. So that is why you would want to publish it here and not just share a link to the same article which you could do here, you could just copy that and say, paste that in and it shows the same thing. It looks quite similar, but the key difference is that if you publish it as an article and even just share 20 or 30% of it, all of your connections are gonna get a notification. If you share it just as a post, like I've done here, they will not get a notification, but it may end up in their newsfeed as well. But the key thing that I'm trying to stress is that the article has much more visibility for your connections and that is why you should really publish it as an article 
uh, just like uh, this example here. So if you want to create content that gets a lot of exposure on LinkedIn, write an article, put 20 or 30% of the article there, leave the meat back on your website and encourage people to continue reading back on your website. So go ahead, use that strategy for your own business, for clients, for a company that you're going into in order to get much more visibility, extend your influence and help people solve their problems on LinkedIn. In this video, you're gonna learn how to create your own LinkedIn group. And this is one of the best tactics to build your brand and generate leads to grow your small business. So we're gonna run through the three important steps you need to complete. And the first step is actually just to go ahead and create the group. So to do that, log into your LinkedIn profile, come across to work, and then you'll see the option to go over to groups. Um, then if you come to my groups, you can see the option to create a group. Now in here, you can see that you can give your group a title. You can upload a description, a logo, include some rules, and you'll probably want to leave this as a standard group so it, it can be visible in the search results so people can find it and other members can be invited to it. So in terms of what should you be putting in the title, the logo and the description, well, really just you just want to communicate the benefits of people joining this group. What is this group about? Is it a topic like social media marketing? And in the description then, you know, what is the benefit of this group? Learn strategies for social, learn the latest strategies for social media marketing that can grow your business, etc. You need to get across the benefits there. So that is step number one, just simply create a group. And if you're a little bit unsure about this, you can always come in and discover some groups to see the titles that they've put in, to see some of the descriptions here that they've put in. And you can just have a glance through those to, to really help you get started setting up the group if you're having a problem with that. So step number one is just create your own LinkedIn group. Now step number two is where it starts to get interesting. This is where we want to find people to join our group. And to do that, let's go back to LinkedIn. Essentially what we want to do is funnel people who are already active in similar groups back to our group. And so to do that, let's just say I'm going to search, search for social media marketing. And uh, we can see that I'm seeing all these search results here, people, jobs, content, companies, but I really wanna filter this down to groups. And so what I want to do is go ahead and start to join these groups. Now I'm a member of this one already, so you just keep working down through the list. You can see 2 million people on this group, which actually I've, uh, requested to join so you don't join immediately you need you may see it pending and so you can just keep going down through the list and you can be, become a member of up to 50 groups they may not approve your request to join straight away but usually it's done within 24 hours so that was step number two just join up to 50 relevant groups that already contain your audience now step number three is to come back to the group section again and really we want to have a look inside of these groups that we have really joined here so let's go to this one looks quite active and now what we want to do once we're inside one of the groups and we're approved as a member that we want to click on the members tab here and once we are in the members tab, then we can actually start to message people directly for free. We don't have to pay to do this. And we could send a personalized message, invite them to join our group and paste a link to our group in there as well. So you can work down through the list if you want. And um, as you can see, there's quite a lot of people in this group. So sometimes it's a good strategy to actually come in and maybe look at those smaller groups, say this one here, that has a smaller number of members, 444, and you can invite them personally. Or you can just take the time to go through, have a look at their profiles and see, are they really a good fit for you? Um, and that is a great way that you can really just build up a valuable pool of your potential customers. So inside of your group, what you can do is just maybe block any from competitors for getting in. You obviously want to demonstrate your value, demonstrate your 
expertise, don't be overtly spammy or salesy, but it's hugely beneficial to have all of your target audience in one place. So now that you know how to create a group on LinkedIn, consider using this tactic for yourself to build your brand and generate leads to grow your small business. A LinkedIn company page helps others learn more about your business brand, product services, and job opportunities. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a page, add admins, publish content, and add employees. So the first step is to go ahead and create a page. And to do that, you can just come down into the work section here. You can scroll to the bottom and you're gonna see the option here to create a page. Now all you wanna do is firstly put in the company name so I'll just put in setup demo as an example. And then you're going to see that you can adjust the LinkedIn public URL or your custom URL. And ideally this will just be the name of your business. Uh, and hopefully that is available there for you. And you just wanna click verify that you're official representative of the company and go ahead and create the page. Now as suggested here, you should add a logo and cover photo, give candidates full context around your company by filling out all the sections, and you can even add your company name and company description in each target language that you are discovering. So we'll just go ahead and click uh, get started. Now in here you can see those options to add the profile image, change the name, add the description, etc. Now it can be a little bit intimidating to fill this out if you're not sure what to fill in. So what I would recommend you do is you actually op open up LinkedIn again in a separate tab and then you can come into the search bar here and start to search for some companies. So let's just take HubSpot as an example. And actually, I think their page came up there, but if they don't, you can come across the companies, just open that up. And what you can essentially do is have a look at some companies and their pages and use it as a template for yourself. So you can see they've got a nice bright logo in terms of it just being two colors. And that's a key thing for company logos. It's a great idea to have two colors and not a white background because that'll blend into the page. So you really want it to be a bright color background. And then I see white here, that really pops out. You can also see that they've used their cover image space to show the team members. It's kind of a fun place to work. That's appealing to candidates if they wanted to come and learn more about LinkedIn and the jobs that are available. Well, look, it looks like a pretty fun place to, uh, to work and that's the type of thing that you can use that cover image for. Let's open up another page again and we'll have a look at some other different types of companies. So if we search for Nike and see it didn't pop right up there so we can come to companies and again we can have a look there. So what we can see here and this is kind of interesting best of company pages 2017 as awarded by LinkedIn themselves. In the background there is really the campus uh, of their offices and so again it's appealing really to people who would potentially work there. Not only the team but hey that looks like a pretty awesome place to work. Now if we scroll down uh, maybe down to the about us let's have a look at these. So they really get into you know what they actually do, what their kind of story is, how many customers they have, and where some of the offices are. So that's important for an international company. And if we look at Nike, then let's have a look at example of them. A little bit of the history about the company, named after the Greek goddess of victory. And again, some of their places where they're actually operating, their founder or founders, Phil Knight, it's kind of a well-known guy. And then also you can see that they've added in their website, your founded, type of company they are, number of employees, specialities, etc. If we do the same on the HubSpot, you can see those same details are there as well. So the point is that I would encourage you to search for some company pages, check out what they're doing and um, model yourself on even people particularly in your niche or company sizes that are similar. But as a general rule, you can see the profile logo here, two simple colors and with a, a simple image that really pops out. So Nike, we can have a look at these, see black background. 
simple logo two colors pops out cover photo show the team or maybe even show the campus where you're working and then in terms of the about us a little bit of history explain really what the company does at a high level and the areas where you are uh, operating and here's an interesting part as well for more information visit our company site or career site and then they include company's details so you can see that this page is really geared towards hiring people into the company because there's a clear call to action there and they're also focusing a lot on the um, campus and probably a similar thing here as well so there's tons of ideas on existing LinkedIn pages you can just take the best ideas from them and apply them to your own page so I'll let you fill in the uh, steps there for yourself fairly straightforward but let's explore some of the other features of uh, the LinkedIn company page and one is the updates so you can really share updates and this will go out to the people who are following your page and um, you can do it in a very simple way like that you can just come to the updates page publish it you can see engagement details here and metrics now coming across to analytics as well we can see it's people who have followed the page the careers page the company's page etc so there's a full breakdown in terms of the analytics and we can also get some notifications there if our company's been mentioned in a post and this is essentially where we would monitor that so already in this video we've learned how to create a page to publish content and now look let's look at how to add admins to the page so to do that you can just click on the admins tools in the top right hand corner click on page admins and then you will just go ahead and add any admins in now they must have set up their linkedin profile already so once they've done that you can just search in there to find them and then you can go ahead and add them so let's just say you could just select somebody there they're going to get the notification and I'll actually just remove that because that's just a friend and then you can go ahead and click save and they're going to receive a notification now the final thing we want to cover is how to add employees to your business page on LinkedIn and actually it's the employees themselves who will associate with your page so you really want to tell employees to come into their own pages here I'll view the profile then you want to come down to experience add some experience and then you can put in the company you can see it there setup demo and then they just go ahead and add in their title and when they've started etc and that's going to show up on their profile so what you want to do is once you've set up your page actually encourage your employees to set it up you can give this information about the page name to the HR departments and maybe ask them to go to get everybody set up so once again to create a business page on LinkedIn click on the work icon in the top right hand corner go ahead and create a company page and in there you can also add admins publish content and then once you have set up your page you can ask employees to add themselves to your page as well and that is how you can really help people learn more about your business brand, products or services, and job opportunities by creating a business page on LinkedIn. In this video, you're gonna learn how to get $50 of free ad credit for LinkedIn. Now you can use this ad credit to create sponsored content, so really increasing the visibility of it, or you can use it for in-mail, so contact people you're even not connected with, or to create some text ads dynamic ads and programmatic display ads so there's a lot of way you can use this ad credit but getting it is very simple and that's the first step all you have to do is come to this page and I'll put the link to this in the resources section of the video so you can click right through you don't have to type it out and then just go ahead and click request credits you can autofill with LinkedIn and then you can go ahead and just request the credits now one thing to note is that this offer is only valid for new LinkedIn advertisers and there's a limit of one per customer so that's just a caveat there to be aware of so once you go ahead and request your credit they are going to really send it out so keep an, e an eye on your email inbox and your ad credit should arrive within the next day and don't forget to maybe check that spam folder as they've suggested here 
And there are also going to be some things you can watch to get prepared and some videos and case studies you can have a look at. So it's very simple to get $50 free of ad credit. Why wouldn't you do it? And just go to the link in the description of this video and get those ad credits for yourself. They'll be with you in less than 24 hours.